all right welcome back to the channel guys today what we are going to do is we are going to perform a trigger job on the uh, rock island um, m206 um, it's going to be a basic modification i do want a disclaimer um, anything you do to your firearm is your responsibility and you take full responsibility for your actions if you mess your gun up it is your fault not mine now with that said this is really really simple um, the average guy is going to be able to do this um, a little tip is take pictures as you go or record it as you go as I am doing now um, so that way you can come back during this assembly if you're having any issues um, so let's go ahead and get started um, like I said the only tools are going to be required for this uh, this job here is just going to be your screws uh, to remove so you're going to need a screwdriver to do that and you're just going to need some grease uh, because here's my take on this so we're unloaded my opinion the double action on this is great um, awesome single action if you watch the trigger it don't move you apply some pressure <laughs> so very clean very crisp trigger break and even double action if you stage it hardly any over travel um, very good so I don't think it needs any spring replacements or any smooth and tune um, so what we are going to do is we're literally just going to open this up and we're <coughs> excuse me and we are going to apply some grease in certain areas that is just going to enhance the smoothness so let me get these grips off and uh, we will begin all right once you remove the grips you'll be ready to start the first step but before we get going I just want to show you what this gun will potentially look like with the plastic grips on there um, if you're going to use this gun for a shooter or you know even possibly a backpack gun or a glove box gun this might be the the grip for you um, it's going to eliminate that high arch um, allowing you to have a better placement to the trigger uh, also allowing you to come further up in your uh, the webbing of your hand to get a higher uh, bore axis up onto the gun uh, so probably going to be a better grip for a shooter um, but I kind of want it for the uh, the wood on there for the the cosmetic uh, look so once you get that off there you're going to be ready for step one uh, step one is going to be to double check, make sure that we are clear. Uh, we're going to cock this hammer, but at the same time, you want to make sure that this plate does not move out of the little grooves. Like so. And as you can see, there's a little hole in that guide rod. Okay, that hole is allow you to get something in there. Uh, a lot of guys use paper clips. Uh, I actually don't have one readily available. So what I'm going to use is this dental pick that uh, came with the cleaning kit. And just going to insert that like so. Okay. Then you almost need, you almost need three hands. I'm going to go ahead and release the trigger and you can pull that out be very careful with this we're going to set that off to the side now okay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this screw that screw and this screw right here that holds your your crane in place so let me save you the time of watching me unscrew some screws and uh, we'll get these panels ready all right so once you remove those screws you're gonna be ready to disassemble so like always between every step we're going to check make sure there's nothing in the in your cylinders here and as you open this on out you're going to be able to just remove your uh, your cylinder and crane there's no need to really mess with this although 
you can I've already done it this end piece here you can unscrew this um, and this will allow your crane to come out I do recommend that you clean this area very well you can take a scotch bright to it because it is what spins your cylinder so when you're pulling your trigger your cylinder is moving so the more smoother these pieces are in return you should have that should um, relate back to your trigger um, which like I said I've already done this in my initial video I degreased everything with rubbing alcohol disassembled and cleaned and as you can see that frog glue is in there and it is working very well so you can do that I am not uh, what I'm focused on is inside here um, if this was a Smith or a Colt or heck even a Taurus um, <clears throat> something of a little higher quality I would recommend that you take a rubber mallet and hit the frame until your side plate um, pops off but considering this gun is pretty crudely put together I don't really see a point so I'm just going to get in here and we're just going to pry this on up like I said expensive guns that right there is a no-no and some of you are probably still cringing but think about what this is okay remove that um, not even going to remove this here this is the uh, the unlock uh, portion there so I'm gonna go ahead and just set that off to the side here and I'm gonna look here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and remove your um, your transfer safety bar here Go ahead and remove that like so and we should be able to in theory pull the trigger and it should release the hammer like I said being very careful here okay so there's two things that I'm going to be using okay I'm going to be using um, this actual uh, gun grease here um, what I have done is I've put it into this uh, applicator here which is literally we all probably have these to know what these are um, and then I'm also going to be using the famous uh, Glock grease which is Loctite anti-seize okay so let me go ahead and, and clean this up a little bit in here with some Q-tips and um, that way I can remove some of this frog glue and get it ready for this grease. All right, so I got that all cleaned up. I basically just wanted to remove uh, some of the frog glue that was in there because frog glue and regular petroleum don't mix too well and uh, we're getting ready to pack this with grease. But, you know, on this here, I mean, when you look at this, I mean, there's not really a whole lot of rough edges. now. You know, you look at this here, you can tell it was a casting. So there is kind of some rough edges. Um, but as far as the trigger components go, you know, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too hateful for what it is. Um, forgot a little bit there. Uh, so, yeah, just basically if, if you're doing this and you haven't had it apart, you know, you're going to want to definitely clean all that old uh, uh, oil and stuff that's provided. So all I'm going to do... I'm literally just going to apply an excessive amount of grease here okay this is where your hammer rides okay so we're, all we're doing is just applying grease to areas that could possibly have some uh, some friction I'm going to here up in front of the trigger some grease in there and grease down in here I could go further with this and uh, actually remove the trigger and do the same thing to that pin as I'm doing to the hammer but like I said I don't see a, a point in it and you know at the end of the day it is just a Rock Island $200 gun apply some grease to all these pins here okay and then I'm actually going to inside 
the hole here. Let's focus. Inside the hole here, I'm actually going to get some grease inside that hole. Okay, and I'm going to just smear some on the outside edge here. Okay. Pulling the trigger should allow me enough room to bring the hammer back down. Sorry, I'm focused on what I'm doing here. I'm sorry if it was out of focus. Okay. All the contact points right there, we're going to put grease in. And once you once you dry fire this, you know all your all this is going to kind of move around a little bit here. But one of the nice things about grease is that generally speaking, it, it sticks where you put it. If this thing ever did take a spill in a in the water, uh, you know it's going to stay protected and all that good stuff. So um, while I have this grease out, I am going to go ahead and put Libris's amount here on, and that hole right there is where the hammer pin comes in so we're just going to kind of spread it around here in case there's any areas here that is going to be a friction point um, this right here is going to be a spot where the hammer or the trigger pin is going to rub so you're probably wondering well what are you going to wind up putting the uh, copper grease on well <clears throat> on top of this ball here where your uh, your guide rod from your hammer spring is I'm actually going to put some here and then in the little cup um, because it's actually a rubbing uh, almost like a ball joint in a way so by putting this in there should help smooth that area up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm sorry if I'm breezing through this I want to make this video as short as possible for you guys okay let's put that on there like that so we'll go ahead and set that off to the side for now um, transfer bar we'll go ahead and put some here inside that hole there now when you're putting your transfer bar in you know make sure one you can get it in there okay and then you want to make sure this little spring comes up behind your uh, I believe it's called the crane stuff on film okay pause all right and we're back you know how it is You're doing something like this on camera not going well your face starts getting hot um so Basically, just finagle that back in, making sure to get that spring back behind the crane. And uh, now we are able to uh, finagle and get this uh, plate back in. The only real note is on your side plate here. There's going to be a spot right inside there.
a little notch right there. Uh, this little pin. Right there. They need to line up. So as you put this on, you need to kind of uh, move this back and forth here to uh, make sure that those properly line up. So uh, you got to start it in from the top first. There's a little notch on the top here that kind of lives up underneath there. At the same time, function test at first just make sure that this moves back and forth freely okay <clears throat> now we will be able to um, go ahead and reinstall our uh, uh, hammer spring and guide rod so we'll go ahead and do that at the same time you're going to pull the hammer back and make sure that those two line up Okay, go ahead and cock it all the way. We'll be able to remove whatever you had in here, preventing that from, uh, from sliding off. And uh, why I got it like this, I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda spread out a little bit there. You can remove some of it. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna let this down easy. Like so, a little access in there. I'm going to go ahead and get the grips put back on, get the screws back in, and we will just see how this thing turned out. All right, so there you have it. Uh, she's all put back together. Um, before you put the grips on, if you wanted to add like a couple little drops of oil to that guide rod and spring, which I did that during the initial. Uh, cleaning of this gun uh, treated it with frog loop um, same thing like I said in the beginning if you want to clean out and uh, lubricate or even put a light coat of grease um, here and going through that way you get a good good nice spin there uh, like I said mine's frog loop so uh, I don't need to do that but uh, I have to say I function tested this uh, before I turn this camera back on and my god I mean, if you just watch the hammer, there's no stuttering on the way back. There's no staging. Single action. It's almost sketchy. I mean, it was sketchy before. But, I mean, as you can see, the trigger don't move. You just apply some pressure, and it just breaks. And if you can just tell when you, just the sound, and listen to that. Um, definitely an improvement and then also you know part of a trigger job too is just going and go shooting it all right uh, dry fire is set and, and play with it um, multiple things are happening when you're doing that one the gun is training you two you are training the gun so you know always just setting dry fire uh, live fire is better uh, but dry fire you know it's a way that you can actually work on your trigger work on your trigger control without spending any money and we all like to not spend money so um, and with that said you know this this trigger job didn't cost me anything uh, it literally even just with recording this with re recording obviously doubles the time it took me about 20 30 minutes you know without the camera in front of me I would have had it done about 10 so um, you know it was the stuff I already had and literally guys any grease would work even if you just had a can of white lithium grease, um, anything's going to work at this point with that. Uh, red automotive grease, like uh, high temp bearing grease. Um, whatever you have is going to work, okay? Grease is grease. It's just going in there. It's just going to smooth things up and lubricate it. <clears throat> like always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you like my videos, I'm going to put a couple links down in the description. Uh, the Amazon store that I opened up. Um, it's a way that you can help uh, kick back 
to the channel um, if not it's cool just uh, you know if you like the video please hit that like button subscribe and most importantly share uh, especially any social media sites that you're a fan of and um, till next time we'll see you and I want to encourage you to be performance driven in life and demand greatness thanks for watching